Today we're going to learn Spanish with the fantastic movie Up. We will do so by breaking down the trailer so that you can get not only the meaning but also the proper context and different cultural uses of all the words in it. This is a deep dive, so grab something to take notes with. The way this video is going to work is we're going to break down the trailer word by word. Here's where you take your notes as well as prepare any questions and then afterwards you will review your notes and ask any questions that you didn't understand in the comments below. Buenas tardes. ¿Precisa usted de alguna ayuda, señor? Buenas tardes means good afternoon. It's a very common greeting and you're going to hear it in every Spanish-speaking country in the world. ¿Precisa usted de alguna ayuda, señor? ¿Precisa usted de alguna ayuda, señor? Do you need any help, sir, mister? Precisa comes from the word precisar, which if you translate it is do you need? Don't confuse it with precise, that's a false friend and it does not have the same meaning as in English. Usted is the formal way of referring to you in Spanish. If it wasn't formal, he will say precisas or precisas tú. De means of, alguna, some, any, but feminine because we have ayuda, which is feminine, la ayuda, and it means help. Señor, Mr. Gentleman. You're going to see that quite often. Notice here how in Spanish we have the inverted interrogation mark, whereas in English we will only have the final one. No. Si quiere, le ayudo a cruzar la calle. Si quiere, le ayudo a cruzar la calle. Si quiere will be if you want. Si means yes in Spanish, as you probably already know, but it can also be used as if. So, if you want, again, this is the formal conjugation of the word querer, which means to want. So, if you formally want... Le, you, I will, do something for you, with you. Ayudo comes from ayudar, means to help. A, to, I will help you to cruzar la calle. To cross the street, street feminine. Now notice how I pronounce cruzar as cruzar instead of cruzar. This is because in most Spanish-speaking countries you will hear people say this as cruzar. And any word that has a Z in it will be s will have an S sound. Whereas in Spain, you will hear people say cruzar. ¿Quiere? ¿Le ayudo a cruzar la calle? No. ¿Si quiere? ¿Le ayudo a cruzar el jardín? No. ¿Si quiere? ¿Le ayudo a cruzar el jardín? This is the same phrase as before. If you want, I help you to cross the, but this time, garden. Jardín. Masculine. ¿Si quiere? ¿Le ayudo a cruzar el jardín? No. Si quiere le ayudo. No. Au. Carl Fredriksen ha soñado con aventuras toda su vida. Carl Fredriksen ha soñado con aventuras toda su vida. Carl Fredriksen is of course our main character here, the old man. Ha soñado con means has dreamed with or has dreamt of. A comes from the word haber, and it means he has. Soñado is the past tense of to dream, which is soñar. Él ha soñado. If I was saying I have dreamed, I would say yo he soñado. Con means with. Aventuras is the plural of the feminine la aventura, las aventuras. Toda, all of, the entirety of, su, his Vida, life. La vida, feminine. If you click on this sentence here. Ha soñado con. Ha soñado con. Has dreamt with. Now, while in English you can say has or have dreamed about or of, in Spanish you will mostly 90% of the time hear ha soñado con. So, you know, it's worth remembering it. Here are some examples. Siempre ha soñado con viajar en avión. Has always dreamt of traveling in an airplane, has always dreamt of this his whole life, like in this example. So, just memorize that one. Y hoy su aventura por fin despegará. Y hoy su aventura por fin despegará. And, today, his adventure. Por fin means finally. Now, in English, you will usually say will finally, but here you can just say finally, because the will is included inside of this despegará, because it's in the future tense in Spanish. You don't need to say 
va a despegará, will, you know, take off, you only say despegará. And it's understood that it will take off because it's conjugated in the verb itself. If you literally translate por fin, it literally means by end, but in the practical sense, you will just use it as finally. <laughs> Adios means goodbye. You've probably heard that before. Different countries will have different ways of saying goodbye. Adios, ciao, hasta luego. They have different translations. And the only way that you will figure out which one is the most common wherever you are going will be by, you know, being there and listening to people and what they say. Or maybe watching some movies or shows from that region. Muchachos. Is basically uh, the same as saying guys or boys or lads. You know, it's just like goodbye, guys. ¿Eh? ¡Ah! Porfa, déjeme entrar. No. Porfa, déjeme entrar. Porfa is an abbreviation of the word por favor, and it will be very much colloquial, you will not see this in a dictionary, but it's common with, you know, younger kids or amongst friends, porfa. You may also hear porfi or porfis. Déjeme entrar means let me enter, let me in. Déjeme here is a formal imperative, and it's important to denote that the boy throughout the movie refers to the old man, Carl, in the formal tone, whereas Carl talks to the boy in an informal tone. Now, while in English you only have one way of talking to people, which is just you, in Spanish you will often see that when younger people are talking to older people, they will use the usted way of speaking. They will use the formal Spanish, and older people talking to younger people will have an informal. Same thing happens in a job interview or when you're talking to somebody in a formal situation. However, if you're just speaking to somebody that is your age or younger on the street or to a friend or anything like that, you will just say tu or vos, depending on what country you are. Entrar means to enter, to get in. In this sense is let me in. Venga, pasa. Venga, pasa. Come on, come in. Venga is a word that you're not going to see or hear, better said, in every country. You will hear it in Spain and you might hear it even in some Latin American countries. However, most places will have their own way of saying come on or let's go, such as dale, métele, apresúrate, apurate. They all have different translations and again, the only way that you will know which one you're supposed to use wherever you're heading is by being there and by absorbing media from that region. Pasa is imperative for come in, is telling the young boy to come in and notice that it is informal. So if it was formal, it would be pase. But here it ends with an A instead of an E because it is informal. Pasa, come in. Agarrate means hold on to something. Again, informal, imperative. If it was formal, it would be agarrese. Agarrese. But here is agarrate. You will notice that the word agarrate. Agarrate has a tilde here. Now, if you listen to how it is pronounced, agarrate, the reason why it has a tilde here is because it is a uh, estrújula, meaning that the inflection of the word is in the not in the last not in the second last but on the syllable before that one the rules for where the tilde goes in spanish are not incredibly complicated and we can go over them very quickly here if the word has the inflection at the very end so if this word was like agarrate then it will have a tilde at the end if it ends in a vowel obviously only vowels can have tildes in Spanish. If the inflection is on the second last syllable, which is the case for most words in Spanish, it will not have a tilde there on the second syllable as long as it ends on an N 
on an S or on a vowel. So if it, here it was agarrate, it will not have a tilde here because it ends on the vowel, it ends on E. However, if this word was ending in a different letter, like maybe L, then it will have a tilde. And if the inflection is anywhere before those two syllables, it will always have a tilde. These three types of words are called aguda, if it has an inflection on the last syllable, grave, if it has an inflection on the second last syllable, and esdrújula, if it has an inflection before that. ¿Dónde estamos? ¿Dónde estamos? Where are we? Estamos comes from estar, which means to be, and the fact that it ends in mos is telling us that it's speaking about us in plural. ¿Dónde? ¿Dónde? Means where. Notice that the tilde is here, even though it ends on a vowel. The reason for this is that this donde is being used as a question, whereas if it didn't have a tilde, it would mean that it's not being used as a question or an exclamation, but rather indicating something. What is that thing? Que es? What? Es is? Esa? That? Feminine? Cosa? Thing? La cosa? That's why we have esa. Again, notice the tilde here and how it's there because this is a question. Esa cosa. Le gusto. Fuera. Le gusto. Now, if you're trying to say in Spanish that somebody likes you, you will say le gusto. It's almost like saying I am within their taste, right? Because gusto comes from gustar, which means to taste something. But it also means to like something. So saying that le gusto is saying that I am liked by them. Le gusto. If you wanted to say instead that you like them, you will say me gusta. Ending with an A and instead of le, we say me because you're referring to yourself and you're saying that you yourself, you like them. But in this case, le Gusto, obviously platonically, the boy is talking about the bird, saying that the bird likes him. Le gusto. Fuera. Largo. Vete. Fuera means outside. It uses an imperative, meaning get out. Largo means long, yes, but in this case it also means leave. Largo is an imperative saying um, go along, get out of here. Largo, vete. vete is another word for leave, go. Mire un perro, patita. Uh -huh. Mire un perro. Mire means look and it's an imperative. And notice again how the boy keeps talking to Carl, the old man, in a formal tone. So if it wasn't formal, it would be mira. But here it's mire. Un means a singular indefinite article. Perro, el perro. The dog. But because we have an indefinite article, a dog. Patita. Patita means po. Pata means po, actually. Patita is a diminutive. You will see diminutives a lot in Spanish where a word will end with like ito and or ita, where a word will end with ito or ita, and that means that it's a little of something. So patita here means po, little po. It's just kind of like a cute way of saying it. Uh -huh. Habla. Hola. Uh -huh. Habla. Hola. Uh -huh. Habla is imperative of hablar, talk. He's telling him to talk. So literally just means talk, speak. Habla. Hola. Uh -huh. ¿Eh? Este perro acaba de decirnos hola. Este perro acaba de decirnos hola. Este means this. Perro means dog. Acaba de, has, just. Acaba comes from the word acabar, which means to finish something. However, in this particular context, it means that somebody or something has just done something. Because the way that you can tell that this is what it means is because it has de. So, acaba de, él acaba de, yo acabo de, ella acaba de, will mean... Me, him, it has just, so has just performed some action. 
Now here it says decirnos, tell us. Decir means to say or to tell something. And nos here attached as a suffix at the end of the word means that it's referring to us in the plural. Now notice how in the trailer they say decirnos with that th sound. Now that is the Spanish pronunciation of this word. Now in most other Spanish speaking countries you will hear decirnos as if this c was an s. How you say it depends on where you are traveling or living or just going. Hola. Oh, sí. Ah, acabo de conocerte y ya te quiero. Again, acabo de I have just, notice that it doesn't say yo acabo de, it just says acabo de, and we know that he's talking about himself, that's because in Spanish you're going to see the tacit subject a lot, meaning the subject that, you know, assumes that you understand who the speaker is talking about. Conocer comes from to know, to meet, te, the suffix tells us that we're talking about tu, the second person, conocerte, meet you, I have just met you, y, and, ya, already, now, te, again, notice how it's a, it's a separate word, but it has the same meaning as here, conocerte, y, ya, te, meaning you, quiero. Now, quiero is translated to love you in English, however, in Spanish, it doesn't have the same strength as the word love. So, Love in Spanish can actually be broken down into a few different words, two of the most popular ones being amo from amar, te amo, I love you, and te quiero. Te quiero is also love, obviously, but a different kind. Maybe it can be described as being a more platonic or even just more innocent type of love. Te quiero. Nos lo quedamos, por fin, por fin, por fin. Nos lo quedamos. Nos, lo que nos is similar to the suffix here, mos, and it's saying that we're speaking about ourselves. So, us, quedamos. Quedamos comes from the word quedar, and it means to keep or to, you know, stay. So, do we apply an action to it? What's the action? Keep it. Do we keep it and quedamos, you know, keep it to ourselves? Um... Here are other examples. Al perro que encontramos, nos lo quedamos. The dog that we found, we kept it. No nos lo quedamos porque no podemos. We are not keeping it because we cannot. Porfi, porfi, porfi is the same word that I told you before. It's the colloquial abbreviation of the word por favor. Makes sense that the scout boy is using it. It makes sense that the scout boy is using it because he's a little kid. And no just means no. Pero es que es un perro hablador. Pero es que. It doesn't add any new information to the message, but it's more like an exclamation. Pero es que, pero es que, you know, it's like you're just putting a little bit more oomph into whatever you're saying. The literal translation will be, but, is, that, is. Again, don't try and literally translate things from Spanish to English because they're not going to make sense. Just learn these sentences, memorize them, if you will. It's the best way to, you know, learn how to use them. Un. Indefinite article, a masculine, perro, dog, hablador, is an adjective. However, in this case, hablador is an adjective, and it means talkative. It comes from the verb hablar, which means to talk. Now, in Spanish, if you see a verb finishing in the or or ar, it could mean that that is a verb turned into a noun or a verb turned into an adjective. For example, you could say pintar is the verb to paint. Pintor means painter. Ala, eso que es. That, what is, what is that. Ala is an exclamation. Some countries use it, some don't. Atrapadlo is the vosotros conjugation, so you guys catch him. It's an imperative for you. So it's giving orders to a group of people or things or robots or whatever he's giving the order to. Again, this conjugation with the vosotros person 
will be heard in some countries, not just Spain. However, a lot of other countries will not say atrapadlo because they don't use the conjugation of vosotros. They use the conjugation of ustedes. So if you were using ustedes instead of vosotros, you will say atrapenlo. Basically changing the A and the D for an E and an N. Atrapenlo. Corre comes from the word correr and it's the imperative. However, now it's important to notice that the scout boy is no longer speaking in the formal tone. He is speaking in the informal tone. Corre. If he was still speaking in the formal tone, it would be corra. Obviously, in the heat of the moment, he just dropped all the niceties and focused more on saving their lives. <laughs> Ya vienen, already, right now, vienen, they are coming. We don't need to say they and we don't need to say are. We just say coming and in the conjugation of the verb itself, we can already tell that it's talking about them outside of our group and that they're doing that now. Russell is the name of the scout boy. Dame la mano, give me the hand, basically means give me your hand. Dame comes from the verb dar, which means to give something. La mano, the hand, feminine. Algunos sabe dónde están. Alguno sabe dónde están. Does anybody know where they are? Alguno means anybody, but it can also mean anything or any one thing. It refers both to people, to characters, and to objects. Sabe, knows. Does anybody, does anything, but in this case, anybody, know Donde, where, están, they are. Again, we don't need to say they, donde ellos están, or donde están ellos. We just say están, and we know that we're talking about ellos, them. Up, de Disney Pixar. Up, the name of the movie. The means by, or from, or of, Disney Pixar. Popo. Con mi GPS de explorador intrépido, jamás nos perderemos. Con mi GPS de explorador intrépido, jamás nos perderemos. Okay, this is the longest bit, right for the end. With my GPS of intrepid explorer, we will never get lost. So let's break this down. Con mi GPS. With my GPS, GPS is using the same acronym that you use in English. So you just say, with my GPS. The explorador, el explorador, means just the explorer, the adventurer, the scout. Intrépido means intrepid. Notice how in Spanish you say explorador intrépido, whereas in English you will say intrepid explorer. So the adjective comes after the noun in Spanish. Jamás means never or ever. Notice that it has a tilde there and it will always have a tilde there. So remember that. Jamás nos perderemos. Will we get lost? Will we go missing? Perderemos comes from the word perder and it means to lose or to get lost. Now notice here it says nos. So the action is going to be applied to us. Perderemos meaning that the action is performed by us. So it basically says we will never lose ourselves. We will never lose ourselves. It's kind of tricky. Just try and remember it. If I was saying, for example, I will never, we will never lose it. We will say jamás lo it perderemos. We lose it us, right? It doesn't make sense if you try to translate it, but just remember that the nos and then the suffix that the verb has will tell you who is performing the action and who is the action being applied to. Wow, that was a lot of information. So I really hope that you learned a lot in this video. If there are any questions that you still have, please write them down in the comments below. And if you don't, then you should go check out this video. I break down the trailer for Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And I really think that it's going to help you out a lot if you enjoy this one. I'll see you there.